Hello and welcome back everyone we weeb online and today I'm going to continue the story what if Naruto became a cyber demon part 4 if you enjoy this video please give it a big thumbs up and to watch more videos like this subscribe to my channel and turn that bell notification on so you never miss an upload no wasting no more time let's begin Captain Campbell The nuclear weapons disposal facility on Shadow Moses Island in Alaska's Fox Archipelago was attacked and captured by next generation special forces being led by members of Foxhound. They're demanding that the government turn over the remains of Big Boss and they say that if their demands aren't met within 24 hours they'll launch a nuclear weapon. You'll have two mission objectives. First year to rescue DARPA chief Donald Anderson and the Arms Tech president Kenneth Baker. Both are being held as hostages. Secondly, you're to investigate whether or not the terrorists have the ability to make a nuclear strike and stop them if they do. Question from Solid Snake. How do I insert? Colonel Campbell. We'll use the submarine to get to the nuclear waste facility. In response to Solid Snake, a rude voice asked, and that would have made him easy to catch in 7 seconds, so it couldn't have been that obvious a plan. Colonel Campbell says, "We'll launch a one-man SDV, swimmer delivery vehicle." After it gets as close as it can, dispose of it. From there on you'll have to swim. Your enemies are the high-tech special unit Foxhound. Your old unit and one I was a commander of. Snake. Oh, they're still around. Captain Campbell. There are 6 members of Foxhound involved in this terrorist activity. Psycho Mantis with his powerful psychic abilities. Sniper Wolf, a beautiful and deadly sharpshooter. Decoy Octopus. Master of Disguise, Vulcan Raven, a giant of a man and shaman, Revolver Ocelot, a specialist in interrogation and a formidable gunfighter. They're all led by Foxhound Field Commander Liquid Snake, the man with the same code name as you. Strong Snake. Colonel Campbell says, "I'll instruct you by codec after you reach your infiltration point." "Anyone going with me?" asks Solid Snake. Colonel Campbell said, "As usual, this is a one man One woman sneaking mission. Weapons and gear are OSP, obtained on site. This is a top secret black ops mission, so don't expect any official help. People in diving suits swam through a cave until they reached the docks that were set up to bring cargo up to the main part of the base. As they got out of the water and quickly hid, taking off their diving gear as quickly as possible, an echo could be heard from where they were. Liquid stood by a cargo elevator that led up and said, "He'll be through here. I know it." He then said, "I'm going to go swat some bothersome flies." And he pressed the button on the elevator and went up to the base. When we got back to the diver who had broken into the facility, it was Solid Snake wearing a diving mask and a black sneaker suit to protect himself from damage in the weather. He hid behind some loading equipment to avoid being seen by the Genome Soldier Patrol and put his hand to his ear to turn on his codec. "Colonel, I'm in," he said. "Good snake." The Shadow Moses nuclear weapons disposal facility is now open for you to break into. First things first, Snake told the man watching him from a submarine in the Bering Sea. Understood. He finished. I need to find and save the DARPA chief. He then started to sneak around the area, hiding behind crates and checking his back to make sure no one saw him. He didn't have any weapons on him yet. He would have to find them as he went through the base. So it wasn't a big deal for him. Picture of Shadow Moses Island, Canyon Farside Crevice. A tongue licked Naruto's masked and goggled face sarcastically. Ah. He pulled both of those things down and found himself lying down surrounded by wolf dogs staring at him and panting happily. Oh yeah. Animals totally love me. He muttered to himself as he started to move slowly after such a bad fall. Looking around, he saw that he fell into a crack when he rushed towards the cliff to get away from Sniper Wolf. The young blonde told Naruto that he had been there for a while because it was cloudy but still light out when he escaped from the base. As Naruto pulled himself out of the snowdrift he was in, he was surrounded by the wolf dogs that had been hanging out while he had been unconscious. Seeing the animals made Naruto remember the last thing he had done. He started looking for a wound from a sniper bullet right away, but he wasn't sure if wolf had actually shot him until he realized that he was still running. After that, he just kept going until he was picked off. It looks like it never happened. When he looked down and saw that he didn't have any wounds, he sighed with relief. The pain from the ghostly wounds had gone away while he was unconscious. His clones had been destroyed, but it was better that they were gone than him. As he lay down, 
the wolf dogs ran up to him and barked and yipped. Hey guys, sorry I can't feed you, Naruto said with a smile. He told some of them, I need to go stop some bad things from happening. He got up, wiped off the snow on his body, and made sure he still had all of his gear. He could see a crack in the ground that he could fit through, which was probably how the dogs found him. He squeezed himself through the crack to start getting his bearings and getting himself together. Okay, so I'm stuck in the middle of Shadow Moses Island by myself with genome soldiers and my foxhound partners who think I'm dead. They had to think he was dead because if they thought he had gotten away, they would have found him because all they would have had to do was follow his tracks to the edge of the cliff where he had been running, which was way out of their way. Naruto thought to himself, that means I might be ahead of them. He turned around and told the wolf dogs, you guys can't follow me. Most of the genome soldiers don't like you guys anyway, he said. Damn, I ran away towards the edge of the island. I'm near the power station. This is right on the mobile patrol route, I can't stay here. They whined as if they understood, and he walked away. Naruto looked up and saw two fighter jets flying far away. Were they stupid? Liquid had the whole country held hostage with nuclear weapons, and they were sending in fighter jets to do whatever it was they were there to do? That would only make him mad. He knew only the frequencies of foxhound members and genome soldiers, which wouldn't help him since he was stuck on the island and couldn't get help anywhere. Even if he could swim back to the mainland, there would be no one to go to so he had to do it himself. Thinking about this, Naruto began running along the roadside he was near. He was ready to use this route until it became safer to take less direct routes to get around. The first thing he had to do was try to free Meryl. Any help would do, and this was at least a start. Airport, after getting off the cargo elevator, Snake hid because the heliport outside of the base's tank hangar was well protected by a dozen soldiers. Snake touched his ear to connect to his codec again and began talking to his support, a hind D. What's a Russian gunship doing here? He asked out loud as he watched the helicopter get ready to take off. Campbell said, I don't know, but it looks like our planes drawing their attention caught their eye. Now is your best chance to sneak into the base without being seen. Liquid took charge of the hind D by himself and flew off to deal with the jets that were bothering them. They only have 18 hours left until their deadline you've got to move. Don't forget that Naomi and Mei Ling are also there for you if you need help. So please feel free to call me or them snake. Don't forget that you only have a pair of binoculars. Get ready with whatever you can find. When Snake thought about being taken from his peaceful home, he said, oh, I remember that. First Dr. Naomi searches me naked, and then all of my weapons are taken away, he said. Picture yourself in that situation. Campbell was replaced by a woman who spoke in a formal voice. The woman teased, well if you make it back in one piece maybe I'll let you do a strip search on me. Snake fought off a sexy grin and said, I'll hold you to that doctor. I'm sorry to let you down, but I was able to sneak out my cigarettes, he said, pulling a pack out of his supply pouch. How in the world did you do that? Naomi asked him, genuinely interested. In my stomach, Snake said, as if it were clear. Your tiny set of shots to prepare me for this mission stopped my stomach acids, so thanks. That's disgusting. It is what it is, Snake said, not caring much about what she thought. All right, I'm going in now, he said as he started sneaking around the helicopter platform of the heliport. As he slipped past the soldiers, he could see that they were on edge. He didn't need to fight anyone because he didn't have a weapon on him. Snake hid behind a wall that led to the tank hangar as two genome soldiers walked by. The two men didn't notice him because it was dark and the wall was blocking their view. As they went by, Snake heard them talking. Do you think that little jerk Uzumaki thought he had a chance of getting away? When he got out of the canyon, he thought he was out. The freak. The second man said, yeah, I heard Sniper Wolf put him out of his misery though. From where we were, we could hear the shots. That jerk was a waste of space, so get rid of him. Foxhound stuff for my behind he should have cleaned his boots. Snake waited for them to move away before turning on his codec. Colonel, I thought you said Foxhound only had six members, he asked. What did they mean when they talked about another one? Who is the Uzumaki? Campbell said, Uzumaki, as if he were testing the name because he thought he had heard it before. That name sounds familiar, but I can't remember why. But I wouldn't worry about it because they said he was dead. Snake, it's not your fault. All right, Colonel, 
Snake said as he turned off the radio and leaned against the wall until he found a supply truck parked near the front doors of the tank hangar. The hangar doors were locked, so he had to find a way to get inside, he jumped into the back of the truck to get out of the cold for a moment and look around. In the back, he found more military equipment that was probably meant to go into the nearby armory. Fantastic! Snake thought to himself as he looked at an open crate of SOCOM pistols. I'm finally armed, he thought, though he still needed to find some bullets. Snake finally found a gun to protect himself, so he jumped out of the back of the truck when it was safe to do so. He then made his way to the wall next to the tank hangar doors, sneaking up to an open vent he had seen while he was in the truck. He ducked down at the open vent on the ground and crawled into it on his belly. Snake gave himself a small smile of victory when he got into the stronghold without any problems. So far, so good, he thought to himself as he moved carefully through the vent so as not to make any noise until he got a call on his codec again. It was starting to bother him. Couldn't he get some work done on his mission before people started asking him questions? Yes. He asked, trying to hide how upset he was. He was told, I'd like to introduce FOXHOUND's former drill sergeant, the man who helped train you one time. He's another member of your support team that I haven't met yet. Master Miller is coming from his home in the middle of Alaska to help you. The man Snake had met before said, Hello Snake. I may not be there with you but I have experience surviving in some of Alaska's harsher conditions," he said. I can help you get through this by telling you how to best deal with different situations you might face. Snake was glad to have his old teacher, another friendly person from his past, with him on the mission. Thanks master, he said. There's no one I'd rather have with me in a foxhole than you. On the outside of the tank hangar with Naruto, Laying down in the middle of the snowy road and grabbing the undercarriage as it went over him was a risky way for Naruto to catch a supply truck that was heading down the path. He had just dodged bullets from the best sniper he had ever met, so a truck didn't scare him. The truck took him right outside of the tank hangar, where he waited under the vehicle for a while while the men around him went on patrol. He had even seen Liquid take off in the hind D to attack the jets that were hanging out in the area. Those poor jerks. Liquid's going to shoot them right down. He's that damn good at using the hind, he thought. He eventually got out from under the truck and shook his head at the security camera that was looking at him through the sealed hangar doors. Naruto quickly flipped his throwing knife from his supply sleeve and stuck it in the joint of the camera arm, stopping it from turning. Now he only had to deal with the guards. No genome soldier had the skills to find a motivated Naruto. Naruto knew the parts of the base he could get to before the uprising like the back of his hand out of boredom. Naruto snuck past the patrolling police and quickly climbed the tower next to the tank hangar. He then took a low-key position at the top of an automatic searchlight, using the bright light to hide himself. Anyone who looked up would be blinded and unable to see anything behind the light. Naruto then jumped from the top of the light to the snowy roof of the tank hangar and ran toward a set of air ducts that stuck up. The boy walked up to them and pointed out the second one from the left. First one leads to the first floor, second one leads to the first basement, oh yeah. He then popped open the vent cover and jumped inside. To avoid a direct drop, he placed his back against one side of the vertically dropping vent and his feet against the other side, carefully scooting himself downwards. It took Naruto a while to get to the bottom, where he started to crawl and eventually reached another closed ventilation grate. He could see through it and smirked to himself while fighting the urge to fist pump. He knew he was in the holding cells in the first basement of the building because of the dirty, gray walls and the two steel doors lined up next to each other on one wall. He wanted to be there anyway because that's where Meryl would be if she was still alive, and he didn't see why they would have killed her. That would have been a waste of a possible hostage. Naruto decided to take a chance and began banging on the grate over and over again until he heard someone say, I already told both of you to stop making that noise. That was Johnny's voice. This was going to be easy if that were the case, thus Naruto kept banging. Once he entered the area, Naruto stopped banging and had to stifle a laugh when Johnny didn't even go towards his location, he went to one of the cell doors to berate whoever was inside, don't make me have to come in there, he made threats. The answer from the woman behind the cell door was, bite me needle dick. Naruto sat back and kicked the grate as hard as he could, violently freeing it from its screwed to the wall position. He then pushed himself out as Johnny turned around and pointed his famous. Of course, by the time the rookie soldier raised his gun to aim it, 
Naruto had already grabbed the front of his face and slammed his head into the side of the door, knocking him out. When Naruto easily won, he rubbed the space between his nose and mouth and said, Sorry, Johnny. The masked man couldn't hear him, so Naruto turned to the door where he heard Meryl and looked through the peephole. And you said you didn't need me? He said it in a funny whisper. Roroni, They said you were dead? Meryl said in shock as she jumped to the door to look into his bright blue eyes through the peephole. How did you get here? Be quiet. Naruto shushed her quickly, using his card key to open the door to Meryl's cell before she ran out and grabbed Johnny's unconscious body, confusing Naruto as to the purpose, why. Naruto asked her quietly as to why she grabbed Johnny until her tank top hit him right in the face. Naruto slowly pulled the piece of clothing off of his face to find a topless Meryl with her back to him, pulling the clothing off of Johnny. Whoa. Really? He let out a low hiss and his face turned red, but he didn't turn away. Oh come on, be an adult, Meryl said under her breath as she put on Johnny's uniform instead of her own. I heard a pretty loud noise in the next cell before you got here. How else am I going to go around and try to stop this crap from happening? She asked as she put Johnny's balaclava and weapon over her face. Listen, the DARPA chief was in the cell next to me, she said. They know my face. There was a sound of pain coming from him and I don't know what happened. Meryl pointed the famous at the door, and the DARPA chief was standing behind it, getting ready to look into it. Naruto really didn't care about the DARPA chief, he just wanted to stop whatever was going on. However, if helping Meryl would help him in the long run, he could take a moment to figure out what was wrong. With this in mind, he drew his MP5K and crept towards the cell, quickly sliding the door open as he looked around. As he walked into the cell, he noticed Donald Anderson lying face down on the ground, motionless. This caught his full attention. He then noticed an open air vent on the far wall that looked a lot like how he had gotten to the cell block in the first place. With his attention on Anderson, Naruto almost missed the person hiding in the corner next to the door until he felt them move. He turned his gun on the man and knocked his MP5K out of his hands. In return, he knocked the man's SOCOM pistol out of his hands and into the corner. The man then punched him in the face, which hit him hard and threw him against the wall of the small cell. After his back hit the wall, Naruto spun off of it to avoid a follow-up thrust kick that, if it had hit him, would have broken a few ribs because it hit the wall so hard. Naruto hit his opponent in the face with a backhand punch from his blind spot, but he then hit him with a side kick that made Naruto stumble and fall over the bed in the cell. The sudden attacks caught Meryl's attention, and she rushed through the doorway, pointing her famous at the person who was attacking Naruto and telling him to freeze. She told him to stop and look at her. He gave her a short dismissal grunt and then turned back to Naruto, who was getting up after sitting on the bed. He raised his fist to hit Naruto again, but the blonde soldier's fist landed right in his stomach, making Naruto feel satisfied as he felt his breath leave his body. The punch made the man stumble back outside the cell block, Meryl was knocked out of the way before she could get up and point her gun at the man again, saying, I told you to freeze. He didn't listen this time, so he moved toward her to disarm her with his bare hands. That's when Naruto jumped in front of him and made him try to punch instead. When the man took a step back, Naruto blocked it and hit him with another backfist that missed. The man was moving very quickly, but Naruto could see a man in a sleek black outfit with a headband. Fuck hiss. Stop warning him. Just shoot him. Naruto yelled over Meryl's head without waiting for her to pause again. He didn't know who it was but didn't have time to ask right now. The man faked a stutter step forward, which Naruto fell for because it happened so quickly. Naruto then took a front kick to the side of the head, which threw him off balance and sent him tumbling into a wall. Just as Naruto got back on his feet, his enemy came up behind him and used the wall to jump off of and spin around, hitting him in the head with a kick that knocked him to the ground. Why did you kill the chief? Meryl asked the man as she quickly moved over to him and pointed her famous at him while holding the barrel right over his chest. She asked him in a mean way. The man and Naruto both knew she wasn't going to shoot him by now. Have you ever even pointed a gun at someone? The man on the ground asked in his rough voice, your hands are shaking. He grabbed the barrel of the gun and placed it right against his chest, staring Meryl right in the eyes, unnerving her with his uncaring look, can you shoot me rookie? I'm not a newbie, Meryl said, not taking the gun away but also not firing it. Liar, the man on the ground said, 
Those are the eyes of a rookie like I've never seen them. He pointed at Naruto, who was wiping blood from his mouth, and said, that's the real soldier over there. You didn't even take off the safety, though. He thought for a moment and said, you two aren't a part of them. As Meryl moved away from the man, Famous continued to point at him. She turned to face Naruto and asked, you said you have a card key, right? Why? Who was he? Naruto asked her, keeping his eyes on the man who was slowly getting up. He wasn't like anyone else on base. Let's leave this place right away, Meryl yelled at him as if it were clear what she was saying. Naruto slapped her in the face and told her to calm down. Did you not hear me when I said everyone gets a card key? You took Johnny's stuff? You have one on. Do something about that door. He yelled and waved his arms angrily just as the door opened. The man muttered, a little too late for that, as he dove back into the cell where the fight between him and Naruto began to get his weapon. As genome soldiers swarmed into the cell block, Naruto and Meryl turned to the door. Fuck, Naruto said under his breath before he noticed Meryl wasn't firing. What are you waiting for? Oh no. He yelled and pulled his two SOCOM pistols out of their holsters to fire at the soldiers to give Meryl cover. He hit one of them and killed it when he pushed her into the cell next to the one where their mysterious guest went to get his gun. He stuck his head out and fired his SOCOM at a brave genome soldier who was coming at him, saying, kid back me up here. When he saw Naruto do the same, he threw Naruto his MP5K, and Naruto put his pistols up right away to use one of them. It cracked his jaw, so maybe the blonde brat was also a good shot. Meryl saw Naruto sneak out of the cell and step back into the hall, firing his semi-automatic rifle in short, accurate bursts. Together, the two veteran soldiers killed over seven genome soldiers. Naruto, who was in the hall, had a better view of what was happening. Oi, weird guy, we've got more coming, he said as he took a break to switch magazines. Reload while we've got the opening. He then looked at Meryl, who was watching the fight, and said, pick up that gun and pull the trigger, we need help. Hearing the edge in Naruto's voice shocked her into doing what he said without even thinking about it. While Naruto and their temporary ally were reloading, she fired down the hall and killed two genome soldiers. She gasped when she realized she had just killed people. The unknown man smiled as he said, good shooting. He was glad to have some good support from the people around him for once. Maybe he could get out of this. When Naruto's MP5K magazine ran out, another wave of three genome soldiers came down the hall and walked straight at them. To hell with this, Naruto muttered as he slung his MP5K over his back and pulled a smoke grenade out of his supply pouch to throw down the hall. He waited for the smoke to fill the air before charging into the fight. The man with them almost lost it and asked, What are you doing, kid? He said as he heard sporadic gunfire and then silence. The smoke cleared to reveal Naruto, and Naruto, and another Naruto. Three Narutos holding the remainder of the genome soldiers at gunpoint with SOCOM pistols, what are you? Special, Naruto said before he and all of his copies pistol whipped their hostages into unconsciousness. Two of the copies then vanished in puffs of smoke. Very, very special. Dadbeo, he said with a sigh as he kicked one of the men who was out. He then walked over to Meryl and poked her in the forehead while she was wearing a mask. Next time, please just shoot them. It's not usually that I kill for no reason, but this was a great time to break that little moral rule. Meryl swatted Naruto's hand off of her head and ran down the cell block. As she came out of the door, she quickly turned around and said, thanks for the help. She then walked down the hall with a haughty air. Hey, hold on, as he ran after her, Naruto said, I need your help, Naruto propositioned, followed by the mysterious man. They were both stopped when Meryl turned at the elevator at the end of the hall and fired at them both, forcing them to take cover, whoa, what the heck is wrong with her? I guess she can now shoot, Naruto said to the strange man until Meryl's gun stopped firing when the elevator door closed. While Meryl's random firing pattern held them both down, they both saw Psycho Mantis shimmering in the hall right in front of her, bullets going through him like he was an astral projection. Yes dear. Just like that, he said. Your mind is strong, but it's nothing compared to his, he said as the elevator stopped. Naruto and the unknown person were left alone as the projection went away. Naruto said, fucking Mantis, because he knew what Meryl was feeling. Then he saw the man talking with his hand on his ear, trying to tell someone what he had just seen. He has a codec too. Who is this guy? 
Naruto asked himself. The man seemed to stop talking on the codec to listen to Naruto. So that was Mantis, he said. So since your little friend freaked out on us and ran away, who are you kid? You're not part of the next generation of special forces or foxhound. When Naruto said, I was in foxhound, the strange man gave him a mean look and said, I said I used to be in foxhound, but never officially. They tried to kill me and kicked me out because I didn't want to be a part of this. He smiled at the man and put out his hand to shake. Naruto Uzumaki. The man looked at Naruto's hand and then at the blonde's soft smile. He then groaned and reached out to shake Naruto's hand. Why not? He had just killed a dozen or more genome soldiers right in front of him, and he probably needed all the help he could get for this mission anyway. Snake, he said simply, his eyes wide. What's the matter? Are you Snake? I was shocked when Naruto asked, Solid Snake? Who is the real Snake and not Liquid? Who is a fake? Naruto laughed and scratched his head. Wow, it's great to meet you, he said. I've heard a lot about you over the years. Master talked about you all the time. While Snake sighed, he didn't really want to be famous, he was glad Naruto didn't say that he looked up to him or something. That would have been awkward. Do you know where the head of arms tech is? And I need to find him to get the last of the nuke detonation codes. Then maybe I can end this. I can't let Rex fire one. He shook his head and frowned at him. That doesn't bother me, he said. You could just beat Liquid and end everything, so why go through all that trouble? Naruto wanted to find Liquid, skip all the stupid stuff, and kill him. That would end everything. Too bad he only had level 2 clearance. He needed a better card key to get deeper into the base, to the places he knew he could never get to. Not even members of Foxhound had full access, only Liquid and Ocelot did. Naruto nodded to show that he understood what Snake said, orders, kid. Well, if that's the case, then I'd better get going, Snake replied. Is there a way for me to get in touch with you if I need to? Naruto picked up his MP5K and told him, yeah, my channel is 141.92, he then added, I need to go on ahead, just so you know if you didn't already you aren't going to get too much further without a better card key. He held out a yellow card with a 2 on it, but Snake grabbed it and said, Whoa, you aren't getting mine, I need it. You need to get your own. Snake barked. Where are you going? As Naruto ran back to the cell block faster than he could keep up. When Naruto saw the genome soldiers lying down, he told him, to find liquid and raise hell. He then dove back into the open vent and started his climb back to the top of the tank hangar from where he came in. I know most of this place like the back of my hand. Just call me if you need help or information about a certain spot in the base, he said through the vent as he made his way back up with Chakra. Snake stuck his head to look into the vent only to find Naruto climbing up through there effortlessly before disappearing up over a ledge in the air duct system. He got out and immediately went to his codec, seriously, I need to know who that kid is. He's Foxhound but he's not Foxhound, he's got these weird abilities to make copies of himself, he's faster than anyone I've seen in person, he's stronger than me in this suit. Campbell immediately tried to dredge up some kind of information on Naruto for Snake's benefit. Trying to discover if he was really friend or foe, I know that name is familiar to me for some reason. It's very specific, I remember it for some reason. Naomi do you know anything about this Naruto Uzumaki person? I know something of him, but very little though, Naomi said, taking a moment to pull up what she could on Naruto from her station on the sub, age, 18. Blood type. B there is very little on him but we do know that he started popping up in certain circles of conversation in 2002. A very skilled counter-terrorist soldier, he's had workings with Foxhound over the last year. He's been groomed to join them apparently. I actually came into contact with him last month. He volunteered to test your codec months prior and I implanted it in January. He, he seemed like a good person, too young to be so used to this kind of life. She actually sounded remorseful when speaking of him, I thought he was just another one of the genome soldiers at first. His genes were remarkable. So you've spoken to him before? You can judge that he's on the up and up? Snake questioned her. He didn't know why he didn't just ask her in the first place. Naomi had been the head of FOXHOUND's medical staff. If Naruto was supposed to be an enemy he was an enemy that Snake wanted to stay away from. Campbell just couldn't shake the feeling that there was something about Naruto that he was supposed to know or remember, I wouldn't rely on him so easily either way though Snake. 
Just get to your mission for now. Find the arms tech president, you don't need to contact Naruto for that. That didn't sit well with Snake. This kid was running about already fighting the battle that was supposed to be his mission. Now he had the rookie that had freaked out in the middle of a battle and then shot at him once it ended, and he had another kid that could literally be anywhere running around, Master M.I. Snake was about to ask Miller for advice before he remembered Naruto referring to being told stories of him by, Master, Master do you know the Naruto kid? Master Miller's voice came up in the codec after Snake's prompting, I do. I taught Naruto everything I knew about how to fight in his earliest years. His skills were always a mystery though. He left and joined the US Army the moment he was able. He's wild, very insubordinate, he won't follow anyone's lead and resents those in positions of power especially those directly over him. Don't let him get close Snake. He's too dangerous to work with. Well I wasn't really going to rely on him too much in the first place. Snake said dismissively so as to dissuade his support team's fears over Naruto being a wild card. I had to know something about the kid you know? He made two copies of himself that could move and fight. He can stick to flat surfaces. That's kind of something you want to know more about. With Naruto. Roof of the tank hangar. Naruto slipped back outside without any issue and let out a sigh, his breath materializing in the cold air. Okay smart guy, now what? He looked over the edge to see that Liquid had landed his hind D back at the heliport. He had obviously gone out and put the herd on the jets that had been flying around, putting a frown on Naruto's face as he must have passed around there at some point before heading further into the facility. Great, now where do I go to find him? If Liquid was down with Rex then Naruto wouldn't be able to find him until he took the right key card to get there. Wait a minute. Naruto thought suddenly, a plan of action springing to mind, the scientists had to be able to get to Rex somehow to work on it in the first place. Liquid didn't put in the security measures, he just had the traps with the electric floor and the nerve gas in the lab section installed to better hold the workers hostage. If that were the case then there had to be a card key somewhere in the lab. If he could get a better security card then there wouldn't be anywhere he couldn't go to reach Liquid. Just as Naruto was about to head deeper into the nuclear disposal facility to enact his plan of action, his codec went off, from a frequency he had never spoken to before, hello? Naruto? He heard Meryl's voice come through loud and clear over the line, good. This guy's communication gear works. Hey where are you? A tick mark appeared on Naruto's head. I'm on the roof of the tank hangar after dodging your bullets like the Matrix. Why do you shoot at me and Snake? I wasn't trying to shoot at you. She tried to reason back to him, something in my head told me that I had to take the other guy out, that he was dangerous. So I tried to. Naruto was about to tell her that the reason she did that was because of the mind control of Mantis, thinking that she hadn't had the time at all to know anything about any member of Foxhound when Meryl put together the second part of what he had been saying, wait. That other guy was Snake. Not Liquid Snake right? So that must have been Solid Snake. Wow. I fought with the legendary soldier himself. She said excitedly, sounding kind of fangirl-ish. More like I fought with him, and against him. Naruto quipped, not missing out on an opportunity to take a jab at someone no matter the situation. A little something he must have picked up from Ocelot, you just stood there looking pretty, and then you shot at him when we stopped. He then let out a chuckle. Actually you didn't even do the, looking pretty, part. You were dressed like a guy. Shut up, she muttered in return, obviously embarrassed to say the very least, that will never happen again. And this is a disguise, duh. Every genome soldier is wearing this stuff. What, do you want me to walk around looking like you? I don't walk around though. Naruto said, walking around the roof, trying to keep the blood flowing through his legs properly, I'm a ninja. I can do all kinds of things and I don't get caught out in the open unless I want to be. You aren't going to see me unless I want you to, or you've got some kind of thermal goggles to see me in the dark better. Meryl stifled a laugh, a ninja, right? I'll believe that when I see it. You mean when you don't see it? Came the cheeky reply from Naruto before he got serious again, where are you? Going to help Snake. Meryl answered, you should be fine on your own right? You know this place better than anyone, you said so yourself. I guess but I was. He didn't really get to respond because she cut the transmission right then, eliciting a sigh from Naruto. I didn't know that soldiers got groupies, Naruto muttered to himself. Well there went his idea of getting himself some help. 
Someone like Snake would only go after his own mission objectives and once Meryl found out how to reach Snake he wouldn't be able to pry her away. Fine, that's okay. I do my best work with a handicap. He felt he had said that before in a similar situation, and deja vu hit him, getting him to drop to the roof on his belly as if he were about to get his head taken off. When nothing happened, Naruto took solace in the fact that at least nobody saw him do something so embarrassing, better safe than sorry. Is that what you call it? A gravelly voice called out from nearby. Naruto immediately reached for his MP5K, getting a chuckle from the figure that he couldn't see, grunting angrily to himself at his inability to spot the figure with just his eyes. I have to wonder though, have you found your reason for fighting? He asked almost in a taunting manner, your enemies have. Naruto couldn't make out where the voice was coming from, even with the full moon bathing the open rooftop through the snow. Why do you even care? Who are you? I'm like you. The voice said, a child born into a life of war. And now I've finally been turned into the weapon I had been fashioned to be from the beginning. Neither alive nor dead, just existing. Existing to fight. And you are on your way to a life like that boy. Silence reigned between them for a moment before the man's voice spoke up again. Or maybe I should just end it before you do become like me. It would be the merciful thing to do. At that moment, Naruto was grateful that he had been able to personalize his ballistic vest. He had taken the first opportunity he could to do so, making it denser with far more material after remembering how old his ballistic knife bullet passed through his standard issue vest in Iraq. His vest was far heavier than most, but the protection provided was far greater, and he had the speed to sacrifice for it. It actually reminded him of the weights possessed by one Rock Lee in Konoha, just not that intense. The reason being, he wound up taking a heavy slash with something across his chest. It didn't reach his body though it did knock him down. Naruto quickly jumped back up to his feet and formed a clone to go back to back with him, a kanai and a SOCOM pistol drawn for both of them. This didn't do much but give Naruto an early warning radar as to where the person attacking him might be as when his clone was killed he immediately dove away from where his clone had been standing at his back, firing in the general direction of where the attacker might be, only to hit nothing, great, I can't see him. Naruto thought to himself before moving towards the edge of the roof, trying to keep the amount of places his assailant could be to just the space in front of him. Ah, a trapped rat. The gravelly voice spoke loud as Naruto neared the edge, cornering yourself thinking that you would give yourself a fighting chance at surviving by taking away your other options. This guy really likes to talk. Why does everyone older than me think they need to talk my ear off when we fight? Naruto narrowed his eyes in forceful concentration. Come on, focus. It's just stealth camouflage. You can beat this. He could see erratic patterns in the snowfall, but he thought that to be just the wind blowing the snow about, until he realized that there was no wind at all. Naruto quickly fired his SOCOM at the disrupted snow pattern and saw the stealth camouflage deactivate to reveal a man that looked like a futuristic ninja. Naruto emptied his entire clip at the ninja only for him to block every bullet with the sword in his hands. Bullshit. I can't do that. Naruto thought bitterly as the ninja heard the empty click of Naruto's pistol and came forward to attack him. Naruto ducked a slash meant for his head and in the same motion drove his kanai through the ninja's foot rolling through underneath him and avoiding the attack altogether. Naruto licked his lips in anticipation now that he could definitely see his enemy for sure. Oi, I didn't know that I was beta testing the new season of Power Rangers. He quipped, because I give that costume two thumbs down. You look like you lost a fight to a paint gun. The joke was clearly lost on the strange cyborg ninja, not knowing or caring of Naruto's reference. You have an instinct for battle just like I knew you would. You specialize in nothing the way the other members of Foxhound do. Instead you adapt to whatever situations you can handle and you learn best under duress. He reached down and pulled Naruto's kanai from his foot, not even flinching as he did so. Now let's see how well you perform with your life on the line. Don't talk like you've got the advantage, I can see you now prick. Naruto shouted, forming two cage bunshin to back him up, making them rush the cyborg ninja first, throwing some shuriken at him. This was futile since if he could stop bullets with his sword how wouldn't he be able to stop slower moving shuriken? This wasn't the bulk of Naruto's plan however, he just needed the ninja to focus on something else so that he could make two more clones on the fly that took the blind spots on both sides of the ninja, both diving at him. One clone went low, the other high in their diving attempts, 
But the cyborg ninja just jumped over the low clone and used his sword to cut through the high attacking clone, dispelling it. It left him open for a counterattack from the real Naruto though, as the original didn't miss a beat, driving a jumping kick right into the cyborg ninja's chest, sending him flying back through the snow on the roof. Naruto's two other clones flew through the air and attempted to finish him off with crushing diving heel drops, but the cyborg ninja still had his sword in hand and cut right through them. The original Naruto was intending to follow up and finish with his all-around destroyer technique Rasengan, when his clones were killed, breaking his concentration for the technique and letting the cyborg ninja to get back up to his feet. Naruto's eyes were firmly on the sword that the cyborg ninja had, you're the reason that the genome soldiers were so edgy these last few days. A few of them disappeared, and they were convinced that they weren't accidents or anything. It was the main reason that Naruto didn't question Meryl being brought in earlier that day as a replacement, but this guy was the one that caused them. Naruto actually saw a dead body of a genome soldier over the last week. Liquid tried to say it was an accident, but being that he was the only person on the entire base that ever used blades of any kind, and Naruto was certain that he'd remember killing a jackass genome soldier, there had to be some kind of slasher running around. And now he met a ninja attacking him with a sword. I would love to play with you more, the cyborg ninja stated, but I'm actually not here for you so I'll have to leave you. Don't disappoint me now. Disappoint this. At that moment, the mental connection between Naruto's clones and himself came in handy as his final remaining clone had drawn the MP5K, taken the forefront, and attempted to fire on the cyborg ninja, only resulting in the ninja throwing the kanai he had confiscated from Naruto earlier, hitting Naruto's shooting clone in the head and stunning the original with the backlash of his clone's death for a split second. This gave the cyborg ninja enough time to cut through all of the ventilation ducts with his powerful sword and activate his stealth camouflage before diving into one, not letting Naruto see which one he took to escape. Naruto growled to himself, walking over to his displaced kanai and grabbing it putting it back with his other equipment. He touched the deep gash that sat in the middle of his vest and sighed, I'm going to need to get this replaced, it's pretty useless now, to the barracks then. He said to himself as he moved to leave the roof of the tank hangar. He needed to grab more stuff anyway. He'd need his pack if he really wanted to try and do anything to stop Liquid and the others, I need my other cooler toys anyway. With Snake. Tank Hangar B2 Armory South Backroom. Snake found the arms tech president Kenneth Baker tied between multiple pillars with C4 strapped to his body, set to go off if anyone tampered with it. Before he could deal with that however, he had to deal with the arrival of Revolver Ocelot who had been waiting for him. The two then battled to a stalemate with Ocelot even ricocheting shots off of the walls. You're pretty good, Ocelot said, hiding behind a pillar with his signature revolver at the ready, you're pretty good he said, ejecting the used shell casings from his gun, just what I expected from the man who shared code names with boss. It's been a long time since I had such a good fight, he said, adrenaline pumping through the old Russian cowboy's body as he reloaded, I'm just getting warmed up though, he said as he finished reloading and spun his gun in his usual showy manner. He moved out from behind cover to fire at Snake when in a flash his gun hand was severed from the rest of his arm effortlessly, what? Gah? Ocelot exclaimed once the now useless appendage hit the concrete floor, my hand. Blood spurted from the stump as Ocelot held his wrist. It went unseen as the wires holding up the arms tech president were cut, allowing him to fall to the ground and avoid the C4 explosions. Said explosions knocked Ocelot back against a concrete wall. Snake watched the scene, utterly confused at what he was seeing. One minute he had been fighting while unable to go all out due to Baker being a hostage, the next everything had been turned on its head and started going his way. Stealth camouflage, Ocelot muttered, biting back the pain from his severed hand. He looked at the center of the room where he could see the discrepancy in the air, glaring at it hatefully, can't you even die right? He asked snarkily as the stealth camouflage faded to show the cyborg ninja with his sword out. Ocelot picked his hand up, the hand still gripping his revolver, and ran from the room, you were lucky. He said to Snake, we'll meet again. With Ocelot gone, Snake turned his focus and his gun on the cyborg ninja that was walking towards him. Who are you? He asked sharply. He had already dealt with enough unknown quantities tonight, he didn't need another. I am like you. The ninja said with no malice in his gravely voice, I have no name. He then turned as Kenneth Baker started groaning and getting up, 
the red eye in the middle of the cyborg ninja's helmet momentarily glowing red. Baker's first sight was the cyborg ninja as his eyes focused on him, that exoskeleton, he muttered at seeing the inhuman frame covering the being. The red eye of the cyborg ninja crackled once before electricity surged through his body and he seemed to snap, shouting, seemingly in torment before moving faster than Snake had seen, probably faster than Naruto had moved when he had escaped him earlier. The ninja turned his stealth camouflage on and darted all over the room before heading outside of it, leaving Snake and Baker alone. Who the hell? Snake said to himself, lowering his pistol now that the danger seemed to be over for now. He instead turned his attention to Baker who was unable to stand due to an injured leg that he hadn't noticed before. Moving towards the downed man he helped him up, maybe now he could get some traction with his mission and find out how to stop Metal Gear REX that the DARPA chief told him about. Snake set the injured man against a wall to rest. Baker looked up at Snake, are you from the Pentagon? Did Jim Houseman send you? There's no time. Snake said, keeping the origin of his commands secret by not giving him one answer or the other, do you have the codes? Baker looked down, not able to meet Snake's eyes, I, I talked. What? That was not good and Snake knew it, now the terrorists have both codes, they can launch anytime. It's not like I didn't fight, Baker argued in return. I was able to resist Psycho Mantis and his mind probe techniques. He couldn't read you, Snake asked suspiciously. How the DARPA chief cracked to Mantis and this wimpy guy didn't he couldn't fathom, how'd you do it? Surgical implants in my brain, kind of like a psychic insulation. Baker tried to explain, favoring his injured leg as he held a cane in his hand. Everyone who knows these top secret codes has them. Even the DARPA chief? Snake tried to feel out. Of course. Baker told him, but then what about Snake's earlier conversation with Donald Anderson before the DARPA chief suddenly dropped dead? Anderson told me that they got the codes from him by Mantis reading his mind. Snake informed Baker. It was quite strange that the chief was as mellow as he was. He should have been pacing back and forth in that cell Snake found him in. Baker looked at Snake in confusion. There was no way that it went down like that, are you sure you heard him right? Yeah, I'm sure. Snake asserted, there was no way he wasn't listening during such an important time, in that case, how did they get your code? Baker once again looked away, holding his injured leg, I never had any training in resisting torture, he said before coughing. Frowning at the rather haggard appearance of the arms tech president, Snake commented on such, it looks like he had some fun with you alright, Ocelot probably went overboard on this guy just because, he didn't look like he could take much physical torture. He's not human I tell you. Baker said between coughs, he loved every second of it. He said as he looked at his damaged arm, noticing Snake doing the same, he then answered the unasked question, he broke it. Snake smirked down at the man, it looks like you're more than even now, his was cut off. Baker coughed out some laughter, you're a very funny man. He then got back to the dire issue at hand, so the DARPA chief, is he okay? Dead. Snake stated gravely. And Baker responded accordingly in shock, what? That can't be. He started hitting Snake weakly in the thigh with his cane, seeming scared of the man. That's not what you promised me Jim. Now you want to shut me up? He said as if the man he was referencing was actually listening to them. Snake grabbed the can tightly and glared down at the man. Calm down, I just told you I was here to save you, he said, ducking down to Baker's level to get in his face. I didn't kill the DARPA chief. He had a heart attack or something. Bullshit. Baker said as Snake stood back up now that he was calm, don't be stupid. Snake stared at the man with a twitching eye before pacing away to get some space, anyway, the terrorists have both of the codes now. Those boys are totally insane. Baker commented hatefully, they wouldn't hesitate to launch. Didn't madmen like these sons of big bosses know what would occur if a nuke was launched? I agree. Snake said. But what do they really want out of all of this? Who knows? Baker remarked dismissively, maybe they're like us in the arms industry, always looking forward to the next good war. He didn't know that he was semi-correct on that front. Snake growled angrily. What was it with people always wanting to start so much chaos for no reason? He didn't get it. Well I'm not letting these maniacs start a war today. Do you still have the card keys Anderson told me you had to override the detonation codes? Not anymore. Baker informed him, the terrorists don't either. 
he said before Snake could flip out on him, that woman, a soldier who was thrown in prison along with me. She had just joined up as a new recruit. They locked her up because she refused to take part in the revolt. A better fate than that other boy that she said they told her was killed. I gave her the key. It must be the colonel's niece. Snake thought to himself, remembering the talk he had with Campbell about the masked soldier who had been with him in Naruto, I'm sure she's okay. She's green but she's pretty tough, how do you know she got away? I was in contact with her by codec until I was tied up here, Baker said, you should be able to reach her too, she stole her communication device from a guard. Her frequency is, he started to tell Snake before he got an apologetic look on his face, sorry, I forgot. Snake fought the urge to turn around and bang his head against one of the pillars, every single time I end up doing this shit, maybe Naruto knows it. I'll call him later. If that key of yours doesn't work is there any other way to stop the launch? Baker racked his brain trying to think of another potential solution, you need to find Hal Emmerich, one of my employees. He's Rex's main designer, if anyone can tell you it would be him. If he doesn't have anything then you'll have to find some way to destroy it. He's somewhere in the nuclear warhead storage building north of here. The labs are there. Why have him create a Metal Gear though? Snake asked, remembering how the world was held hostage twice by those things, two different models that he had to deal with directly himself, the nuclear age ended with the turn of the century. You have no idea do you, Baker said, I'll tell you right now just why it's more intense than it's ever been. With Naruto, Canyon Wall Top. Naruto would have been running along the top of the canyon wall, but he didn't for two reasons. One was so that he could burrow underneath the thick snow to hide himself remembering that this had been around the area where he had to deal with Sniper Wolf. Even if others didn't patrol up there he could still be spotted. The other reason was because he saw a tank trying to hide down in the canyon itself, I do not want any part of a tank, even if I could beat it. He thought to himself as he continued to crawl and dig with his taped hands in a kanai. If he was going to do something asinine like fight a tank he needed his explosives. All he had in the way of that sort of ordnance were his smoke bombs and smoke grenades which were meant for surprise attacks. There wasn't anything that would do to a tank but get him killed. He could use the Kyubi's chakra. His Kyubi powered Rasengan would probably turn the hull of that tank into one ply toilet paper if his fight with Sasuke all those years ago was any indication of how strong it could be. But he didn't need to go on a killing spree or let anyone know he was still alive yet. The longer he could go moving about as a glorified ghost of sorts the better it would be for him when he finally found Liquid and got the opportunity to take him down. At that moment his codec went off. Naruto stopped crawling under the snow and touched his fingers to his ear, hello. I'm kind of between a rock and a cold place right now. Could you call me back? Naruto Uzumaki, a woman's voice said on the other end of the call. Yeah, this is him. He said in an exasperated voice. Who the hell was calling him and how did they even know his channel? Only nine people knew it and seven of them thought he was dead. Six would once Johnny woke up and realized that it had been Naruto that had put his lights out in the cell block, but that wasn't the point, who is this and how did you get this frequency? He heard the woman give him a pleasant laugh, well I would certainly hope I knew the frequency seeing as how I'm the one that implanted the codec in your ear in the first place. Realization sprang over Naruto's face and a smile crossed it. There was only one person he had met that implanted his codec and was a woman, Dr. Naomi Hunter. Wait! Before you ask at all since you probably know by now, I didn't rebel with the rest of Foxhound. I was. We know Naruto, Naomi said, stopping his tangent before he could really launch into it, what are you trying to accomplish here? Naruto frowned at the way she had stated the question, I'm trying to stop Liquid's stupid plan before he starts a nuclear war. I'm pretty sure his haven for soldiers isn't supposed to be a wasteland full of nuclear fallout because that's all he's going to have if he's really crazy enough to launch a nuke. He then blinked as he thought about something, if I steal Rex then can I keep it? Silence reigned over the line for a second as if Naomi was stunned by what she had just heard, Wah. Are you serious? Yeah, Naruto said, if I kick Liquid's ass and then steal Rex right in front of his face and blow him up with it can I keep it? I mean saving the world has to have some kind of perk for the hero doesn't it? How hard could it be to drive? He could steal it, probably. He could drive everything else so why not a Metal Gear? 
I don't even know how to dignify that with a response Naruto, Naomi said. He could just see her shaking her head at him from wherever she was, look, you've been close to Snake haven't you? Yeah, Naruto answered, taking a moment to work his jaw, close enough to punch each other in the face a few times. Why, what's his codec frequency by the way? He could hear chattering between Naomi and someone else in the background of wherever she was, what's the matter? An older man's voice then came over the line, Naruto this is Colonel Roy Campbell. For your own safety I need you to stay away from Snake for the remainder of the mission. We're grateful that you want to help him, but it's too dangerous for you. Listening to the man's words, Naruto had a terse look with a twitching eyebrow, is this a stupid age thing? If you want to put it that way then yes. Yes it is. Find the other girl that was with you and keep her safe if you need a mission to do. There's nowhere to run or hide on this island. Naruto exclaimed, where exactly do you want me to take her to? There's no boat off of here and Liquid's stupid hind is guarded so tight I couldn't take it and keep her safe at the same time on my best day, genome soldiers are running around all over the place. The safest place to be is actually deeper in the base. Campbell let out an angry sigh and spoke up more forceful than before, this is no time for any movie style heroics. Listen to me, if you can't follow this order then. Then you'll what? Naruto replied heatedly, in case you haven't noticed the only chain of command that matters to me is currently trying to ransom the US. Government with nuclear weapons, and there's some freaky ninja running around here with stealth camouflage that almost took my head off not even an hour ago. I'm technically not even a part of the armed forces anymore, so I don't have to listen to you. What are you going to do, kick me off a foxhound? Too late, court martial me, yeah, good luck with that if I even make it out of this in enough pieces. With his bit being said, Naruto didn't want to hear any more and shut his codec off. They wanted him to back off of trying to stop the insurrection. No one could do this by themselves, why did they want him to not help Snake? Movie style heroics, Naruto muttered to himself as he kept crawling his way to his next destination, asshole, I haven't even seen a movie in years. USS, Discovery, Bering Sea, damn it, Campbell muttered as he heard Naruto's line go out. He was an older stout man wearing a grey military suit and a beret, he doesn't know what's going on. He was lucky to survive getting close to Snake once, I don't see how he did if everything is going as it should. You knew he was a member of Foxhound didn't you Naomi? Naomi was sitting nearby at her own station. She was a young woman with long dark hair and brown eyes. She wore a brown skirt and shoes with a white medical coat on over the rest of her clothing, like I said earlier, I figured him to be a genome soldier for quite a while until I went over what I was able to find from his checkup he had to undergo before testing the codec. I remember him because of his demeanor, it was more pleasant than I was used to. So you're saying that the virus isn't set to take Naruto out? Campbell tried to figure, seeing as how the main doctor was right there with him. Naomi shook her head, once I learned who he was after our meeting I tried to program it to his DNA and make him a target, but his body is incredible. His immune system will cast out any foreign antibodies in mere moments. Every immunization he has ever had might as well have not even been given to him since his body just cast it out as well. Nothing like the virus that was constructed can touch him on a biological level. So he's not going to be infected by fox dye, Campbell thought to himself before putting out a call on his radio, sighing as he spoke to the person he had just contacted once the confidential conversation was complete, you were right about what you said about the Naruto kid Master Miller. He is very insubordinate. Miller's voice came over the radio that was stationed aboard the submarine, I told you as much. I always knew that the boy would be trouble as a soldier. He has no discipline at all. He's too much of a maverick for any fighting force's own good. Campbell then noted the conversation to end as Miller signed out, still he was lucky, his body is able to fight off the walking biological weapon that we unleashed into Shadow Moses to take out any rogue elements to the secrecy of this mission. The Pentagon won't be happy about this. With Snake. Tank Hangar B2 South Armory Backroom. Snake could only watch as after telling Snake everything he knew about what was going on, Baker began to convulse in pain for no apparent reason at all, just like what had happened with the DARPA chief, oh no, this can't seriously be happening again. What, 
What did you do to me? Baker struggled to say, gasping for dear life, no it can't be, those Pentagon bastards. They actually went and did it. He said, realizing what was happening to himself, although by now it was too late to do anything about it. What are you talking about? Snake hadn't the faintest idea what was happening to this man. One second he was fine, the next he was dying. They're just using you. Baker managed to get out before he stopped convulsing and slumped forward where he was sitting, going limp and expiring on the spot. What the hell? Snake said to himself before he went to his codec, Colonel, are you listening? Now he's dead too. I have no idea, Campbell replied over the line. Don't lie to me, Snake snapped at him. The chances of this happening to him twice in little more than an hour with two VIPs he had come in contact to rescue. He wasn't an idiot. Naomi chimed into comment, it sounds like another heart attack, but. Snake tried to muse over the options of what could have happened because it was no naturally occurring heart attack, some kind of poison. There was no way he could tell exactly what killed Baker. He didn't have the means to do an autopsy or something like that. Snake I want you and Meryl to work together. Get in contact with her somehow. Campbell requested of the soldier, having earlier informed him that he was Meryl's uncle. Can I trust her? He asked in return, remembering getting shot at not too long ago. More than you can trust me. What about the Naruto kid? Don't worry about him. Campbell said before pausing for a bit, we're counting on you Snake. With that, the transmission ended, leaving Snake alone again. The man sighed and took out his pack of cigarettes, bending the end to light the special smokes, yeah I know, he said to himself. Naruto stood in the second basement of the building that stored nuclear warheads and looked at the clearly electrified floor from behind a glass door. He did this before going through the halls. Naruto would have been able to walk on the ceiling to get where he needed to go, so this shouldn't be a problem at all. That wouldn't work in this case because the hallway was full of nerve gas. He thought Sniper Wolf was joking, but he should have known better. Naruto does not have a key card, at least not this way. Naruto said to himself, fucking liquid, as he got back on the elevator and pushed the button. Fine, maybe I have something in my room that can help me with this. If they haven't cleaned it out yet, it had only been a few hours. He might have hidden some of his gear there still. He became paranoid after being used in experiments more than a year ago. It had to pay off in some way, right? He must have been very lucky because as soon as the elevator on the first floor of the basement opened, it seemed like someone was watching over the area and hearing it come up. As the guard came in to check the elevator, Naruto had to hide as best he could against the wall with the panel of buttons on it. He had to thank himself for being so quick as he snuck out of the room and down the hall to the barracks area. Snake and Meryl were the only ones who seemed to know that he was still alive and in Shadow Moses's heart. This was the best thing that could have happened to him. The man who called him Snake called Naruto soon after he got into the building that stores nuclear weapons. Like a good friend, Naruto gave him Meryl's codec frequency when he asked for it, and he didn't even complain about Snake's support team trying to get him to calm down. He was really nice, wasn't he? Anyway, Snake would have to deal with that tank once he got out of the tank hangar because Naruto was sure he couldn't do what he did and just skip it. He forgot to tell him about that, oh well. He might have been able to get himself out of it, though. So, just in case, he should call and make sure. After getting his things, he needed to get the rest of his gear ready in case he got caught fighting something like a tank. There was still one in the tank hangar, and if he couldn't stay hidden for much longer, he might be fighting it himself. Naruto made a cage bunchen and told it to hide and keep quiet while keeping the elevator free of genome soldiers. That might have helped Snake get to the building more easily. He could only wish that was true. He had spent months going up and down the same halls out of boredom, but it wasn't hard for him to find his way when he was moving on purpose. It didn't take him long to get to the barracks wing of the floor, where he heard gunfire right away. No way he made it here that fast, he only had a level 1 key card, Naruto thought about Snake as he went to find out what was going on. When he got there, he wasn't let down. A group of genome soldiers were shooting at someone who was trapped at the end of a corridor. He was lucky that they couldn't hear or feel him coming because he had their behinds. 
It was possible for him to make four more clones, and each one had two pistols. All of them were held up at the back of the genome soldiers' heads, and when the soldiers realized they were being held up, the SOCOMs stopped their fire. The real Naruto said, Wow, I just caught an attack squad of genome soldiers and they never even saw my face. Either I'm that damn good or you guys are that bad, and then he and all of his clones pushed the pistols hard into their heads. Get those radios off and onto the ground please, Naruto, asked, politely. Soon after, the genome soldiers did the same thing after getting hit in the heads by Naruto and his clones. Who needs a unit or a team? I'm my own damn team, he said as he and his clones threw the unconscious soldiers into a room without their weapons or communication devices. A famous popped out from around the corner of a room at the end of the hall, just in time for Meryl, who wasn't wearing a balaclava, to see what was going on. Oh thank goodness, she exhaled with relief when she saw Naruto and his copies taking care of business. I have to ask you how you do that, she said. Naruto smashed the electronic panel to the door, locking the genome soldiers inside. I have to ask you why the hell they were shooting at you, weren't you walking around, in disguise? He asked, making airy hand gestures as he spoke. After taking off her balaclava to talk to Snake, Meryl turned away from Naruto and crossed her arms. Damn, I think I messed up my codec when I started to run away, she said. Naruto pointed one of his SOCOM pistols in the direction she should follow him and crept back through the halls to his room. Why do you take off the mask? He can't see you, it's just a radio, he said dryly. Besides, you would have gotten caught eventually. Anyone who pays attention can see that you don't walk like a guy. Meryl hissed at him lowly and fought the urge to choke him. W what, I can't believe that with everything going on you took the time to look at, she said. He had gotten her out of jail and kept her from getting shot up in a firefight against a whole squad. When Naruto found his familiar hallway, he stood straight up and continued to lead her along. I am an 18-year-old guy who has spent the better part of a year around one woman max, period. You're pretty cute, and you didn't look back when you got out of my jeep this morning. And it was a long walk from where I parked to the building you had to go into. You are such a pervert, do you know that? Meryl asked him quickly as she stared at him with her mouth open a little. That made Naruto laugh. No, I'm not a pervert. It would be a pervert if it got in the way of me doing my job or acting like a normal person, but it doesn't. He gave her a knowing look and said, Girls think about that stuff too. You mean you didn't try to size me up when we first met? Meryl quickly replied, No. What about Snake then? Naruto asked with a smile. After I told you it was him you probably thought about the little run in with him, you probably called him right after you stopped the call to me. Meryl looked around the wing of rooms and said, no way. She didn't have much time to look around before she was sent to the cell block for not joining the rebellion. Do you know how much therapy I've had to stop being attracted to boys like you? There's no way I'd ever think about either of you that way, she said. Naruto didn't even bother to say out loud. Wow, you got therapy. During that little bit of information. For what? When they finally got to Naruto's room, it looked exactly the same as when he had left. Great, they didn't take anything, he said happily as he pushed the bed out of the way and went inside. Is this your room? Meryl asked him as she stood guard over the door and heard Naruto looking through things inside. I got caught around here, you know. Those guys were going through your stuff all over the room. There's nothing here for you anymore, he replied. Naruto replied, but they didn't find everything. I had to leave them something to find so that no one searching would know any better. He then took out a kunai and tore into his mattress, which made him smile even more. Inside the mattress was a damaged ballistic vest that looked exactly like the one he was wearing now, as well as a copy of the dragon of that he had trained with for most of his time learning. It had enough magazines to make it useful for him as well as a lot of grenades, some of which were single ones that could be thrown and some of which were grouped together to make a very dangerous trap. Meryl turned around when she heard him rip into a mattress and saw his stash of weapons and gear inside it. Wow, you probably never got a good night's sleep, she said as he quickly threw away his damaged vest and put on the new, clean one. Why did you hide all of this stuff? Naruto shook his head and said, 
I'm a very nice person, if you haven't noticed by now. Meryl laughed and agreed, he was a nice guy when he wasn't making fun of her. Nice guys get shot, he said quickly. If I'm going to be a nice guy, then I'd better fight like a jerk. I don't face my opponents head on, I don't have all of my weapons out in the open, and I don't even let my comrades see how I really train. That last one really helped with this. Naruto walked by her back as she left the room, and she asked, why? Because Liquid thinks that I suck. Naruto replied with a hard look in his eyes. He never sent me on any missions that would have shown him otherwise. The mission I had with Wolf in Iraq where I should have died he thought I got lucky. Even with my powers he thinks that he can beat me when it comes down to it. You're saying that he can't. You can beat Foxhound's commander. Meryl asked Naruto as she again walked down the hallway. Naruto gave her a vague answer, I wouldn't bet against me. Then he turned around and asked, do you really want to follow me around? I'm not going to try and meet up with him, we've got different goals. Snake wanted to stop Metal Gear Rex from being used, while Naruto only wanted to get rid of Liquid to stop the threat at its source. She looked up at him and said, maybe I should stay with you. I already found you, she sounded almost hopeful that he would say yes. He thought that being surrounded and shot at by unknown people would make someone never want to be left alone again. Just then, Naruto's mental link with the clone he had left hiding on the elevator told him that Snake was in the building since he had taken the elevator to the second basement floor. Snake is here though, in the building, he would later say sorry for forgetting to tell him about the tank in the canyon, if you put your balaclava back on and just patrol like normal, then I'll make sure he finds you. Meryl didn't feel completely safe going back undercover as a genome soldier, so she asked, what are you going to do? She had been caught once, but it was mostly her fault. Naruto had told her that she could be found, and that made her think, what if I need your help? Naruto smiled at her and said, Snake's going to need your help more than you'll need mine. That might not have been true, but he worked better by himself. Anyone who had been trained the right way would think that his way of fighting was reckless. It wasn't really meant to work with other people unless they were his cage bunchen, who would be told how to fight to help him in the right way. Aside from that, Naruto didn't like fighting in the usual way, so having someone fight with him would be dangerous for them, especially a beginner like Meryl. Just stay around the lobby and bathrooms, he told them. Where are you going? What are you going to do? Meryl asked with a pout on her face. You never answered me. After giving it some thought, Naruto frowned and said, I need to find a way to get the door open in the warhead storage room so that you guys can go further. Naruto knew he could get around buildings by climbing them. So he had to clear the way for them. I'm going to help you guys out and try to go ahead. Some guy named Campbell wanted me to protect you anyway, and you wouldn't be safe with me. He finished but didn't see the shocked look on her face as he walked down the hall. What? Meryl asked Naruto as he disappeared around a corner. Was that my uncle he was talking about? She asked herself as she put the balaclava back on her face to hide once more. In the future, there will be a room for storing nuclear warheads. Naruto looked at the huge doors that were shut and sitting there. He wasn't allowed to open the doors because he didn't have the right level of clearance, and the lab where he might have been able to get a better key card wasn't open to him until he could get through the nerve gas in the hall. That meant he couldn't open this door by himself. From here, how was he supposed to get to another part of the building? He got a call on his codec right then. He wasn't getting any help from anyone, but his codec was sure getting used a lot, hello. Snake's voice came through and said, Kid, I found Meryl in disguise. She's changed back into her normal clothes now that the disguise won't work anymore. Where are you? The hurried Naruto put his hand to his ear and said, on the way. Don't worry, I know where you are. I told her to stay where you found her to wait for you in case you needed her help. Snake laughed, good call, because I actually needed her for the pal key she had on her. Now I can stop Rex once I get to it. We're heading to the communication towers next, watch out for Grey Fox though, I don't know where he went off to after our fight in the lab. He worked in the lab, he asked himself before he thought of Snake's second sentence, wait, Grey Fox is here too. What the hell is this, 
Foxhound Reunion Night. He's not himself anymore I'm afraid. He was turned into a cyborg ninja two years ago by Dr. Clark. He's dangerous Naruto. Be careful. Naruto didn't say anything as the names kept coming at him. Dr. Clark was the woman who did the tests on him two years ago, and she also had Grey Fox. Grey Fox was still alive. He had fought a cyborg ninja named Grey Fox. What the heck was that girl doing with him in Grey Fox? He was shocked and said, I'll be there in a minute, Snake. Just wait for me. Snake knew his voice sounded lost and said, Naruto. He hadn't heard the young man talk like that since they first met. What's wrong? Tell me what's wrong with you. Is it about Grey Fox? The same way Naruto had said it before, I'll tell you when I see you. He then said, don't move. I'll find you guys myself. He hung up the phone and walked back to the elevator like a ghost, thinking to himself, I need to talk to the ninja. I mean Grey Fox again. If it's true that he was there with me and Dr. Clark, did he see me when I passed out? Do you think he knows about the Kyubi? What does he know if he doesn't? Does he know who took us? What had happened to him had been on his mind for a long time. He was now hearing that Liquid and Ocelot knew about it because Sniper Wolf had told him earlier. He was also hearing that someone else had been in the lab with him. Something moved in the corner of the elevator, and Naruto felt it. He quickly pointed his gun at the head of whatever it was. More stealth camouflage, huh? He growled. Truth be told, all of his thoughts were getting the best of him and making him a little mad. Hearing someone else's thoughts made him very angry, so he said, turn off the camouflage or I'll turn it off with your brains on the wall. The cloaking device let out a spark of electricity that showed Dr. Hal Emmerich shaking in his boots with a gun to his head. Naruto knew it wasn't the cyborg ninja or gray fox, but he didn't know what to call it anymore. If it was, he wouldn't have found it until it was already attacking him, if it didn't kill him first. Don't kill me, he yelled. He yelled that line, which made Naruto cringe. He was wearing stealth camouflage, but he only knew how to hide his looks because the elevator door had just opened when he yelled that into the hall, and as is often the case with bad luck, the yell not only went off where it came from, but it also echoed through the halls. Almost right away, Naruto could hear the heavy boots of genome soldiers rushing to the scene to investigate. Fuck, Naruto said. Turn your stealth camouflage back on and stay low. He ordered the scientist as he grabbed Emmerich and pushed him down the hall, walking backwards in case a genome soldier turned a corner ready to fire first and capture second. As Naruto asked, Emmerich did what he was told and was pushed down the hall several times by the young soldier. He finally managed to say, why you're not going to take me to Liquid or any of Foxhound right? Naruto replied, why would I have my gun out if I was on their side? He then aimed and fired at three soldiers who came around the corner the way he thought they would. One was killed, another was hit in the head, and the last one missed, but he had made them back off. It's likely that they'll ask for more now. His speed should have kept them from getting a good look at him. Go hide somewhere. Don't move until you think it's safe. My frequency is 141.92 if you need to call me for something. Now get out of here. Before Emmerich could say anything else, Naruto pushed him away and started shooting randomly to draw attention to himself. This made everyone know that he was the target and was alone. Naruto turned around and backed up to a corner that led down another hallway. He looked down the hallway and saw more soldiers coming. That's why they did call for help. That was really cool. They were also the heavy troops because they wore helmets, big clothes, and heavy vests. When a heavy trooper shot him from the corner where Naruto was standing, he turned around and fell back. He then took off running. Imagine being shot at from two sides in an open hallway. It would be very hard for even him to get away. Until then, he had to use his speed and ability to avoid being hit to get to a place where he could prepare for a counterattack. As the soldiers moved down the hall, he made three cage bunchen and told them to stay low and back up while facing them. They were also told to keep backing up and firing at the genome soldiers to slow them down. Though he was getting farther away, the plan was still working because the gunfire was getting farther away. He had to get rid of the clones quickly, or one of them might get shot and he would take some fake damage. He didn't have to do that. A redhead peeked out of the women's bathroom during the noise and saw him. She said, Naruto, as he ran to find a place that would be easy to defend against the large army. Naruto quickly replied, no time, run. He flew past the bathrooms and Meryl and Snake, who were with her, were soon behind him. 
He would have to ask why later, but for now he had to find a good place to set up his defenses. Where were you two going? He asked. She replied, the commander's room is down the hall from the lobby. It would have been easy to set a trap in the lobby. That's what Naruto saw, since the place in question was getting close. Snake finally asked Naruto why he had them running away so quickly after finding them. Kid, what's going on? What were you running from? Short version. Naruto asked as he led them down the hall from the lobby to the commander's room. The scientist Hal Emmerich blew my cover by freaking out when I caught him in his stealth camouflage. I had to lead these guys away from him since he can't fight. And there are way more than I thought there would be. Before he sent his clones off, they had been able to kill four, but more came in and took their place, bringing the total number they had seen to 15, 10 regular and 5 heavy ordnance. The snake growled, Otakon. When he saved Emmerich from Grey Fox in the lab, the man told him to stay out of sight. So now what? He thought, staying out of the way, meant hiding somewhere Naruto would find him 20 minutes after they split up. Naruto started knocking over tables in the lobby to find a place to hide. Let's go, you two. Go do whatever you need to do to get to the commander's room, and I'll finish these idiots, he said. But Snake didn't know the odds as well as Naruto did. He could hear people talking and a lot of footsteps coming their way. Because Naruto was working so hard to get ready to fight, he knew that his options didn't always look good, are you sure? Naruto asked, do you really want to get into a firefight right now when I'm telling you to leave? He took a moment to set up as many thick couches and lobby tables as he could to protect himself from what was about to happen. After setting up his defense, he pointed to the doorway that led to the hallway that led to the commander's room and said, I wouldn't tell you to go if I didn't think I could win this. Now go so I can finish getting ready. He then jumped behind his cover and told his clones to finish setting up. Snake looked at Naruto as he sat with his MP5K ready behind his makeshift wall. But Naruto quickly left with Meryl and went down the hall, where he began to hear some strange music. By the time he turned around again to look at Naruto, who looked ready to fight, Meryl was acting strangely. She was holding her head as she went on. As Snake moved forward, Meryl stood up and asked in a monotone voice, What's the matter? He was sure Naruto would last and catch up. As Meryl led him calmly down the hall to the door at the end, she said, Nothing. Come on Mr. Foxhound, the commander is waiting. She said this almost in a trance-like state as she opened the door and walked in first. Snake went after it as it closed behind him. With Sasakai, the lobby had two side hallways at the top of the room, one in the back that led to the commander's room and one in the front that led to a lobby pit where Naruto was hiding. The enemy would have to turn a corner to see them and shoot them. He thought that someone might attack from both halls, so he had his clones set up dual traps with a bunch of grenades hanging out of sight in front of each corner. He had metal wire with him behind his cover that could set off the traps. In the lobby, there were also two side rooms closer to Naruto. In these rooms, he had two clones sitting there, ready to fight and help the real Naruto. Thought to himself, okay, let's do this, as he sat there with his finger on the trigger. He thought about Dr. Emmerich in his sleep and hoped that he was out of harm's way or at least somewhere safe. But then again, this was his fault, so if he wasn't, it wasn't really Naruto's problem anymore. The first four soldiers came around the left corner. They fired right at Naruto and his clones, barely missing them, so it looks like they knew they were safe. Naruto pulled on one of his two set traps, which pulled the pins out of one of the grenade sets and let it fall on the genome soldiers. There wasn't even close to enough time for them to get away because the grenades went off too quickly. The genome soldiers in the upper right corner threw a flashbang grenade into the lobby when they saw four of their friends die without a fight. Naruto hit the deck behind his cover and held his ears as the blast shook him up. One of Naruto's clones was unlucky enough to have the grenade explode right under it. It took the full force of the blast and was filled with holes before dispelling after being shot. Naruto was stuck on seeing his clone take damage and die, but he was still able to pull out his other bunch of grenades while his mostly unharmed clone laid down fire to keep the heavy troops from storming the lobby and killing them both. The six soldiers who were being held down by Naruto's clone didn't see the grenade bouquet until the small explosive balls started to shake around on the ground. The grenades destroyed the heavy troops and regular soldiers alike, no matter what kind of armor they were wearing when they went off. Twelve men were killed by two traps, but the real Naruto, 
who had already healed from his clone's injuries, knew he wasn't done yet. At first, his clones helped him count to 15, but that was before they started coming from both sides. Now he knew there were more than that. His clone came over to where he was hiding after hearing him talk to it without words, but before it could get to its creator, five more genome soldiers decided to take a chance and open fire from around the corner. Naruto was able to get rid of his clone before it took any hits that would have hurt it. He then fired back and hit three of them, killing them, since they weren't aiming at him but at his clone. The other two hid behind a ledge and fired back at Naruto, making him duck down again. He had to reload his MP5K anyway because the magazine was empty. As soon as the enemy cover was taken down, two more genome soldiers came from the halls and threw a grenade at Naruto's camp. The grenade landed right next to Naruto's makeshift cover and went off, destroying it and cutting his face with furniture pieces and shrapnel. Naruto threw his MP5K behind his back and stood up. He then grabbed a throwing knife from the sleeve on his left arm and threw it at an enemy, hoping that it would hit the enemy in the neck and knock him out. Now that all the heavy troops were dead, he ran down the far side of the lobby and threw more knives. The genome soldiers ducked out of the way to save their friend. The two people behind the ledge couldn't see over it because they had to duck to avoid getting hit. This let Naruto jump over it and permanently turn off one of their lights by hitting them in the back of the head and neck with a Rasengan which left a small crater where it hit. He was paralyzed, if he wasn't already dead, which would have been a miracle. He saw the other person still ducking down reach for his famous to kill him, so Naruto quickly grabbed his SOCOM pistol and fired five rounds at the soldier who was on the ground. Still, there was one soldier left who had been with the person who threw the grenade, he wasn't going to let Naruto kill him too, just because the kid was quick. If he was that fast, it was time to see how well he could avoid getting hit. Naruto turned to shoot the last soldier, but he already had Naruto beaded. When the young blonde turned around, he was hit by 10 shots from the enemy's assault rifle on automatic. Four of the shots missed, but six did hit. Four of the hits hit the heavy vest, but two got through. After getting hit, Naruto stumbled back and emptied the rest of his clip across the lobby. One of the shots hit the genome soldier in the head, piercing his balaclava and sending blood flying as he spun around and fell to the floor. Naruto kept backing up until he hit a wall, he started to walk down the hall to the men's bathroom for a short break, but he was already breathing heavily. Before he even got to his feet, he had a kunai ready to dig out the bullets. I hate guns. He grunted to himself as he slid into the bathroom. With Snake. Commander's room, building for storing nuclear weapons. Unfortunately, Psycho Mantis tried to control Meryl in order to get an edge over Snake. However, Snake was able to beat the psychic soldier and kill him after a long fight that destroyed most of the office. When the man could no longer fight, Snake knelt down and took off his gas mask, showing Meryl his scars as he said his last words, I never agreed with the boss's revolution. His dreams of conquest did not interest me. I just wanted an excuse to do what I wanted and kill as many people as I could. You freak. Meryl growled. He did all of this just because he wanted to kill? What kind of stupid reason was that? She just couldn't understand how a sensible person could think that. Snake put up his hand to tell her to calm down and said, let him talk. Snake had heard people say this before. He had heard that phrase before. He doesn't have much time left. It was also something he often heard after hurting someone so badly that they couldn't live. Mantis said, Shaking as he thought of what he had seen in Naruto's mind during the boy's escape, you're just like the boss and just like Liquid. No, actually you're worse. He laughed softly and said, compared to you I'm not so bad, especially compared to him. Snake asked the dying man, who? Naruto Uzumaki. Mantis added, I felt his presence nearby before you two came here. I was grateful when he turned around to fight the platoon outside. There is a lot of darkness inside of him more than in me, maybe more than what is in you or the boss. He loves combat, if there was no battle to fight he wouldn't know what to do with himself. He is truly a seed baptized in warfare. He's a monster, believe me I've seen it. His mind is twisted and dangerous. Meryl spoke up for Naruto and said, there's nothing wrong with him. He had never killed someone in cold blood before. He never killed someone for no reason, he always fought just to get ahead. What was Mantis's point in calling him and Snake monsters? Neither of them scared her. Except when you were shooting at him, Naruto wasn't at all dangerous. 
Mantis laughed out loud at what he saw as Meryl's naivety. Just because Naruto got into your heart doesn't mean what I said isn't true. All it means is that you have a soft spot for a killer. Good luck with that, he said with a smirk at her angry expression. I've already read your mind. A quick friend for the kid it seems. He then looked at Snake and said, you should kill the boy yourself Snake. It would be kind compared to the life he will end up living later on. Snake said with a glare, I think I'll pass. Do you hear the silence outside? Mantis asked with a whine. Do you think it would be that quiet if he had been killed or captured? This room would be filled with soldiers if he had. That means that he killed them all by himself. But you'll see that for yourself if you go back out that way. I have one last request for you. Snake said, what is it, as he saw Mantis's eyes flicker. Please put my mask back on, Mantis asked, and Snake obliged. When the mask is off, other people's thoughts get into my head. Before I die, I want to be by myself, in my own world. As Snake hooked the mask back on his face, his labored breathing became more noticeable. I'll open the way to the communication towers for you, he said, moving a big bookcase against the wall to reveal a passageway. If you want to find your future, go through that door. Before the conversation, Snake got out of his crouch and put away his pistol, which had been his main weapon in the heated battle that came before it. He then looked at Meryl. Mantis spoke again, this is the first time I've ever used my powers to help someone. It's very strange. It feels. Kind of. Nice. Mantis said this one last time before she died. That was one of FOXHOUND's downed enemies, and based on how the office looked after the battle, Psycho Mantis did not die easily. It was important to keep going, though. Come on, Meryl, let's keep going. The girl just looked down at the dead Mantis and said, I'm sorry. This made Snake stop and think, how could I let Mantis control my mind like that? Snake fought him off, and it looks like Naruto did too. She almost killed Snake, though, because she couldn't stop herself. Snake told her, if you're going to doubt yourself, I'll leave you here. That wasn't the right time for her to be upset. Things were bad for a while, but now they were better. Never doubt yourself. Just let it make you stronger. Learn something from it, he told them. Meryl gave Snake a stiff nod before she spoke up again. Snake, can I ask you something? About what Mantis said? I was just wondering. He took out his gun and reloaded it, just in case there was something else coming. What? What's the problem now? He asked. No, it's nothing, he said. When Meryl saw how serious he looked, she gave up asking him something personal. What's your name? Your real name? A name means nothing on the battlefield. How old are you? Old enough to know what death looks like. Any family? No, but I was raised by many people. Is there anyone you like? I've never been interested in other people's lives. He never gave her a straight answer to any question she asked. He clearly didn't like the way the young woman was questioning him. So you really are alone, just like Mantis said? Other people just complicate my life. Snake said, I don't like to get involved. You're a sad, lonely man, Snake, Meryl thought to herself as she heard gunshots coming from behind the lobby. What was that? She asked herself. Snake growled and said, the kid. Then he and Naruto ran back to where they had been before. From the lobby, a long trail of blood led to the men's bathroom. Meryl and Snake followed it inside, where they found Naruto pointing his gun at them while sitting on the floor against the far wall. As a hurt genome soldier crawled into the bathroom to try to kill Naruto, the trail of blood stopped right where they were standing. Unfortunately for him, the opposite happened. Naruto's shirt was pulled up over his chest and his vest was off. He had two bullet wounds in his chest and a kanai lying nearby. I'm fine, he said about his own condition, then nodded his head toward the door. You should see the other guys, he muttered as he slid back to his feet with his back against the wall. Seriously, you should have seen them. There were about 20 of them. Because they had to go to the bathroom so quickly, they hadn't had time to look at Naruto's battle spot. When they did, they saw that Naruto had messed up the lobby even more than Mantis had the commander's room. You really don't mess around, do you? Snake asked with a low whistle. The bodies on the floor showed that to be true. Meryl told Naruto, you're a mess, as he pulled his shirt back down and put on his vest again. You're not even going to clean that up or bandage it. Naruto let out a grunt that she couldn't understand. She didn't know that he was no longer bleeding, 
it'll have to do for now unless you want me to go back and get that stuff from the medic bay. I don't even need it that badly. I just need to rest for a while, he said. As he put the vest back on, he saw Meryl's worried face. He said through a bloody shirt front, please. Me and my clones get shot so much they might as well be bee stings by now. Deadly, deadly, bee stings. Shaped like death. What do you think you're some kind of walking weapon or something? Meryl asked the stubborn blonde teen as she walked up to her. Naruto smiled sheepishly at her and said, well, to put it that way, I technically, he heard her groan angrily and frowned, hey, this is nothing, okay, it's annoying at best, just believe in me, okay, no one ever does, and I'm kind of tired of it, since I became a soldier, only Master Miller and Catherine have really believed in me. Master Miller? Snake asked again and again, as if he didn't believe Naruto. Foxhound's old drill sergeant? Naruto sat down on the sink for a moment with a smile on his face. The bullets were gone, but it hurt like hell to get them out. Yeah, Master Miller. The same guy that trained with you a bit. I told you I'd heard all about you Snake. He trained me too, he said. Naruto laughed so hard at Snake's question, do you want to talk to him? That she had to laugh out loud. He liked the way it made him feel. He's on my mission support team. I could give you his frequency to talk, she said. Really? Naruto asked with a smile on his face. He hadn't even talked to Miller in a long time. Naruto didn't care that it wasn't the right time to catch up. That's great, of course I want to talk to him, he said, that's awesome. Yeah of course I want to talk to him. There was a scene outside that proved he was a killer, but Snake couldn't help but smile. He must have kept something good inside to keep himself from going crazy with guilt or having nightmares about what he had done, like Snake did. His frequency is 141.80, he said in response to the man, which made it look like he was very close to Miller. Naruto had already set the frequency in his codec by the time Snake was done talking. He attempted to get up from the sink, but his wounds seemed to have gotten worse because he could feel himself bleeding again. Damn, I still need time, he thought. Maybe he should have taken some time to get some medical supplies. Merrill spoke in a voice he hadn't heard in a while, scolding him for not caring about his own health. Of course you still need time. That's different. Since years ago, Catherine was the last person who cared if he hurt himself. You can't just get up and walk away after getting shot in the chest. This girl had no idea what he was made of if she said that. Just sit here for a bit and rest. You're not going to just keel over and die because of a nagging injury. Even though he wasn't going to pass out and die, he didn't think it was a good idea to tell her that he would only be killed by a certain blow. Naruto grumbled, fine. I'll stay here for a few minutes, but I'll be back out and moving again in no time. I'm not even close to being dead yet. Meryl smiled at Naruto for being willing to compromise. Snake told her, come on, we're still wasting time. The kid's fine, let's get to the communication towers. He then looked at Meryl and said, no one ever said that you were a kid. Snake then left the bathroom and got ready to keep going. But before she left, Meryl took one last look at Naruto, who just blinked in surprise at why she hadn't left yet. What's wrong? Do you need something from me? Naruto asked, trying to figure out what was going on. Don't do anything, Meryl said, shaking her head as she walked out of the bathroom. Just don't go kill yourself, okay? Naruto smirked and faked being offended, they don't have enough firepower here to kill me. You go take care of yourself. I don't want to have to go save you twice. He then joked, go on, I told you I'd be fine. I don't need anyone to watch over me when there's still work to do. As long as you're sure, she told him before leaving to follow Snake. Naruto took a moment to catch his breath and make sure they were ready to move on. He then decided to make the most of his time off by quickly calling Master Miller on the channel. That was a good time for him to act because he couldn't wait any longer. Naruto put his hand to his ear and asked, Master Miller? With a huge grin. Yes. Naruto joked, Oh, I'm hurt. It hasn't been that long since you heard my voice, has it? It would have been wagging his tail at this point, it's Naruto. It's been forever. Following a brief pause, a voice over the line said, Oh, Naruto. I heard that you were caught up in all of this at Shadow Moses. Tell me how you are. Is everything okay? Where are you? The answer from Naruto was a sigh. Yeah. Strangely, 
Hearing the man's voice again made me feel better. It took him a while to realize that he trusted him completely. I did, but I'm not dead yet. I had a close call with Sniper Wolf shooting at me and the Cyborg Ninja trying to take my head off, but I'm not dead yet. I just got through a huge shootout, but I'm fine for the most part. How did you survive being shot at by Sniper Wolf? Anyone that knows her knows that she never misses. He told her straight out, she didn't miss, she just hit the wrong me. Those cage bunchin of mine come in real handy every once in a while. Naruto carefully moved himself so as not to reopen the wound before it was fully healed, lest he have to start the whole process over again. So what's been going on with you? I haven't talked to you in almost six months. You told me to spend most of my calls on Catherine. Miller answered, oh, the same as always, you know how it is. Tell me what you're going to do now. Where are you right now? Naruto told them, I'm resting. He didn't have to tell the man that he had been shot. He just wanted to talk to the man for the first time in months without getting angry, but it was weird. What did it matter where he was? Miller couldn't give him any advice or help him out. Naruto knew more about the base than anyone else. Miller didn't have anything useful to say. Master, I don't want to talk about any of this right now. Just tell me something about Catherine to take my mind off the fighting for a minute. There was more silence over the line than the first time until Miller's voice spoke up. She's fine. She wishes you would come home though, you haven't been here in a while and it's been making her kind of antsy. Naruto's face lit up. Well I think that after I get out of this I'll have plenty of time to go home. I need to get back into the fight, I can't stop now, I need to beat Liquid and end all of this. If I don't make it back then I want you to tell her I'm sorry, I couldn't keep my promise after all, but I did my best. I'm sure your girlfriend is fine with you not making it back Naruto, even if she doesn't know the reason why. He quickly replied, Kitty's not my girlfriend master. She's still in high school, come on, besides, if you knew I felt that way about her, you'd probably try to kill me. That's your daughter. Gah, that was so creepy to hear you say out loud. The last time he saw her, she was pretty. Since it had been over a year, she must have grown up even more. What the hell am I thinking about? She looks a lot like my sister. The transmission stopped when he did, which was good for Naruto because he didn't know what to think anymore. It might have been a bad idea to talk about something other than the mission. He had to stop thinking about something else right now so he could be useful again on the battlefield. It's okay, he would be able to get Catherine off of his mind by the time people started shooting at him. That always made him pay attention. What the hell was wrong with Miller making fun of him that way? Everything has its time and place, and that wasn't that time. On the other hand, it didn't sound like he was teasing him at all. When he called Catherine his girlfriend, he didn't sound like he was joking. It sounded like he was making a real point. Either Catherine really felt that way and told Miller, which was unlikely because it wouldn't have helped her at all, or he really thought that Catherine had been his girlfriend, which was stupid because he couldn't have been wrong about that. He wasn't at home very often, and Catherine was only there for holidays since she moved in with her mom to go to high school. If they were both there at the same time, he would know if they were fighting. Naruto put his hand back to his ear and called out again, yes. What is it now, Naruto? He opened his mouth to ask, so master, where is Catherine right now? With a serious look in his eyes that only he knew how to explain. He tried to keep his tone light and curious even though he might have lost it if what he thought happened was true. It seemed like it was clear to Miller, where else would she be? She's at home. Use your head, boy. As Naruto paced back and forth in the bathroom, his wounds were almost forgotten, he asked, and where would home be in this case? He sounded stupid as he spoke. It wasn't like he cared about getting scratched on the chest to begin with. Here with me in Alaska. Where else? Naruto didn't say anything back. He just turned off his codec, stood still in the bathroom, and looked at himself in a mirror next to the sink. He wasn't sure how long he stood there before he lost it and yelled. He then punched the mirror with his taped fist, breaking it right away. Kate wasn't in Alaska. She couldn't have been there. In February, she was with her mother in Los Angeles. It had been December since she was last in Alaska. Naruto took a moment to wash his face with water and then went back to his codec. He was about to call Snake when he remembered that Snake had told him that Miller was on his support team. With this in mind, Naruto called the Snake support team member he had already talked to. Naomi's voice asked him through his device, Naruto, why are you calling? 
I got the sense from your last conversation with Colonel Campbell that we aren't exactly your favorite people in the world right now. He replied, I don't care about that right now. He then paced around the bathroom while talking on his codec. I need to talk to that Campbell guy. He's Snake's commanding officer on this mission, right? Naomi tried to explain, Raguto, there's something very important going on right now. His voice made her angry even though she couldn't see his face. I'm afraid it will have to wait for a while. Things aren't going very well, he said. What? Naruto asked, what in the hell could possibly be the matter that you can't give the old guy the message to talk? This is important too. With the snake, tank hangar B2 the hospital. Meryl and Snake were ambushed by Sniper Wolf, who had set up a position near the communication towers to watch them. So that Snake would fight back, the female sniper was able to hurt Meryl by shooting her in the legs and arms. But he couldn't do anything without a sniper rifle, so he had to leave Meryl to get one and then come back to fight. He could have avoided it, though, if he had seen Naruto's on the bathroom floor. He hadn't paid much attention to Naruto other than his wounds, though. By the time he got one and went back to defeat Sniper Wolf, Meryl had already been taken prisoner. Wolf had faked her defeat to put Snake in a position to be knocked out and captured. What he was doing was sitting on an electronic torture device when he woke up and saw a fair-haired version of himself smiling at him. There definitely is a resemblance, don't you think little brother? Liquid teased the still snake, or should I say big brother? I'm not really sure, either way it doesn't matter. So this is Liquid, Snake said as the blonde version of himself turned around and began to pace slowly. I can see why the kid wants to kick up his behind so badly. With just a few words, I want to hit him in the face. Liquid told Snake, you and I are the last two sons of Big Boss. When his radio went off, he answered it and said, it's me. He then listened for a moment and grunted, really? Then what? He then listened again and grunted, those idiots. He turned to face Snake and glared at him as he continued to talk on his radio, all right Raven, I'll be right there. He then sighed and told Ocelot and Wolf, who were still in the room, they're not responding to our demands. We'll launch the first one in 10 hours as planned. Damn Americans, Sniper Wolf said, shaking her head at their target country and how stupid they were. Looks like you read them wrong, Ocelot said with a smirk. Liquid looked at Snake again and said, something doesn't seem right. Usually the Americans are the first ones to the negotiating table. They must think they have something up their sleeves. When he looked at him that way, Snake didn't understand why. He was stuck to the table, so what could he have done? So it's come down to this, has it? Ocelot asked as he held his bloody arm wound up against his chest. We're going to launch that nuke and ride it all the way into history. I have to take care of some launch preparations. You're in charge here, Ocelot, Liquid said as he turned to leave. What about you? Ocelot asked Wolf with a smirk on his face. Want to stay for the show? And then she took some muscle relaxants and said, I'm not interested. It's time to feed the family, she meant the wolf dogs. So you'd rather watch your wolves than my show? Ocelot asked in a sarcastic tone. They knew that his field of expertise made a lot of people mad, but he couldn't care less what they thought. When Liquid thought about how he was being tortured, he stopped before leaving the room and said in a serious voice, Ocelot, don't mess up like you did with the DARPA chief. We don't need any more of that. He spoke like he was a teen getting a talk to from his parents. Yes, yes, I know. That was an accident. I didn't think a pencil pusher like him would be so tough. Liquid made a face and said, well, hypnotherapy made his mental defenses stronger. And what about the ninja? Ocelot said, he's killed at least 12 men. As for the cyborg ninja, Liquid said, whoever he is, he's some kind of crazy. Bastard took my hand. How could he have gotten in here? Ocelot growled at the stump of what used to be his right hand. We must have a spy among us. Liquid wondered why things were getting bad quickly. Maybe that or the Uzumaki brat has friends in higher places than we thought. Either way Mantis is dead and we still don't know what killed Baker and Decoy Octopus. We're shorthanded and the runt is running roughshod all over the base as we speak, so keep this little torture show as short as possible. Torture? Heard Ocelot who seemed angry at the accusation, this is interrogation. Liquid abruptly replied, as you wish. He then turned to give Snake one last look and said, see you later, brother. When she heard the foxhound commander yell at her, Snake told Wolf, 
that woman of yours is still in this world. She gave him a happy smirk and left the room, saying, catch you later, handsome. You're lucky she doesn't seem that particularly interested in you. Snake told Ocelot as Wolf left. Once she picks a target she doesn't think about anything else. Sometimes she even falls in love with them before she kills them. But don't worry your head about your own safety, she's had a target in mind for a little over a year now. The thing about it is though, I thought she had gotten him already, but now we find out that had gotten away. Damn Brad is like a cockroach, I knew he'd either be a major help or a major headache. There's only one person in Foxhound who could have been called a brat. Snake thought as he thought about Naruto still being able to move and fight. Things could still work out as long as he stayed out of trouble. Let's get started, Ocelot said as he used a computer to change some things on the bed. How are you feeling? Not bad, Snake said dryly. I took a nice nap on your revolving bed. Too bad I was sleeping alone though. Okay. So competing in a witticism contest with the person who was about to torture you wasn't such a great idea. What? It was going to be bad no matter what, so why not make himself feel better by yelling at her first? With Naruto. A bathroom in the lobby of Nuclear Warhead Storage Building B1. Naruto was now sitting in a closed toilet stall and asked. So Snake was caught by Sniper Wolf and Meryl was shot. This was a summary of what Campbell had told him over the codec. There was a hint of fear in his voice as he asked, that's right. And where were you when all of this was happening? Digging two bullets out of my chest with a knife and bleeding out on the bathroom floor, you jerk, Naruto replied. He didn't really care about the old man's bad mood because he had his own problems to deal with at the time, which is why he called, look, do you have any people stationed at Master Miller's house? No, Campbell said, he was too far inland for us to get soldiers to fast enough to start this mission. Good thing we could reach him by radio for assistance. Why? He told him nervously, you might need to send someone there. Something is really, really wrong. That Master Miller isn't real. I swear it. There was too much off about him. The line let out a sigh, and Campbell spoke up again. Master Miller said you were a bit of a loose cannon. Whose side are you on, Uzumaki? Naruto snapped, I'm on my own goddamn side, and kicked the closed stall door off its hinges which right now doesn't look like it's yours. That was this. It wasn't Master Miller because he would never have said something like that to Campbell. He tried to reason with Naruto until he joined Foxhound. Go send someone to Master's house and check it out. If you do that, I'll get Snake out. He was stuck in the heart of Shadow Moses and couldn't do anything. As Campbell insisted, Snake doesn't need your help to escape. This made Naruto bite his fist to stop him from growling into the codec. His choice to play the game this way was fine, it was time to go low. As an aside, Naruto said, I guess Meryl doesn't either then. He then added, I mean, if she was shot in the arms and legs, then that gives her plenty of ways to escape doesn't it? No, nah, she doesn't need me at all. He stopped talking and asked, hello? Am I talking to my own thoughts now or what? Still no sound. Naruto said, you know Revolver Ocelot doesn't really play nice, even with women. He just had to push a little harder because it was only a matter of time. He always had a way with words, and now it was time to use them for something other than getting people to shoot at him. He told me that he likes hearing the screams of women more than men when he tortures them, something he picked up in the group, he said. Sick bastard. Naruto was thrilled when the colonel finally gave in and agreed to do what Naruto asked. I'll ask about Master Miller. I'll have some soldiers sent to his house to check on him personally, Naruto said. Naruto nodded to himself, happy that he had basically threatened the girl's safety in exchange for a favor. From their last conversation, he knew that Campbell cared about the girl. He didn't like it, but he knew that people don't do things out of the goodness of their hearts, so why should he have to do it all the time? He likely would have gone to save her even if the man had said no, but he didn't know that. Get Meryl and Snake and I'll get Miller checked up on in person. Naruto added as an afterthought, don't radio him and tell him a damn thing. Just send soldiers to show up. The young blonde told Naruto, you set that up, and I'll have Meryl and Snake out in no time, I promise. Are you certain you can get them both? Yes, Naruto said with confidence, I always keep my word. If you help me, I'll help you. Colonel Campbell said in a firm voice, I'll send out the order now. You'll be the first to know when word comes back. He ended by turning off the transmission. Naruto thought to himself, good. 
He then made a Rasengan with both hands and slammed them into the stalls on both sides, smashing them into pieces of broken metal. He then stood up and broke his neck. He already knew where Snake was. They had only been at the base for a few days when Ocelot set up his favorite torture machine, and he knew it hadn't been moved. He must not have had a single genome soldier who was stupid enough to get in his way. He was tired of making out with them and Foxhound. I will continue the story in next part till then we weave offline.